Hope everybody's doing good. We will start in just another minute. So I'll just tell you generally what my plan is for the live session today. Let me uh, find another 528 live session. Uh, this is the final exam live session, right? So it's a you know cumulative of the whole course, but I will, we're not gonna go through the whole course, saving on time for that. So I'll show you generally what my plan is. First of all, you can go to my notes. My notes are available at www. Uh, that, well, if I can type, that'd be good. www.tutor.ca slash notes. And you can find my notes for all my courses um, that are there, including 528. So you can access that. Um, I will have them open next to me as well here. So I can make reference to that. Um, and generally, my plan for today is... Let me open up the, let me open up the notes that I want to open up here, the, the correct course. So generally, my plan for today is um, like I did for the midterm, uh, we're going to do some code examples. We're going to just code it from scratch. I'll show you all the ins and outs of it. So code examples for strategy, strategy, design pattern, adapter. Um, then we can do factory, abstract factory. Should we call it, should we say factory method, uh, abstract factory. Um, and then I have a bridge example, but I have a bridge example. Now, I'm slightly iffy about the, the the bridge example so maybe if there's any suggestions from you guys if i maybe i'm doing something wrong with it i don't know we can just go through it together um but i'll give my interpretation of a bridge example um we can do that after um uh, how i actually have it set up is that these two will actually be paired so i, I we do strategy first and then we extend it with an adapter uh, and then I, we do factory method and we extend it with an abstract factory and then we'll do just bridge at the end by itself it's quite a bit. So if we have time after, we can do a uh, code testing example. Although actually, I don't. I don't really have one prepared. I just was thinking we could just uh, we could just do um, uh, we could just do like one of the one of the things that I actually coded in the stream. We could just choose a random one. You guys can decide. Um, and and we can probably do a UML use case diagram or you know sequence diagram or um, uh, what's the last one? I forget what the last one's called. The one where it's like a FSM, state chart, state chart, yes, there we go, thank you. Um, so I was looking through the design patterns and a lot of them seem very similar. Strategy and state are very similar. Abstract factory and factory, very similar. Um, I think those are all the kind of similar ones. A lot of them have like similar ideas. So like a lot of a lot of um, design patterns have something that kind of acts like an adapter. Um, in fact, uh, factory method kind of has like the two children in factory method um, of the of the factory kind of act like adapters to create the correct um, product, right? Um, but you know, if we just talk about part by part, just focusing on the different patterns, right? Yeah, of course, they, um, they, some of them are similar too, right? Some of them are similar like that as well. So again, yeah, these two are pretty similar. Strategy and state are actually identical, pretty much identical. Um, it's just the meaning of it. That's all that's different. Um, okay, so we're going to get going now. I'll open up the code, but do you guys have any questions before we start? Maybe let me know, like, what's the what's the thing you're most worried about in the course? What are you worried about, like, that you're going to see on the final exam? By the way, I am recording, in case anybody is going to ask. I am, I am recording. Thank you for your, <laughs> you're going to ask. Um, so, there we go. We have that. Yeah. What's your, what are you guys most worried about for the, uh, for the exam tomorrow? It's also 8 a.m., which isn't ideal. Well, it looks like you guys are ready for 100%. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> the patterns, yeah. Okay, the patterns. Well, this definitely code, writing code from scratch is uh, is a good way to learn the um, patterns. And then factory versus abstract factory. That's actually something I'm really gonna I'm really gonna talk about today. Uh, that's actually that's why I did an example like this together like that, um, because uh, yeah, it's it's important to know the difference between those two, how they work. Um, so we'll go through that for sure. Okay, so let's begin with our strategy example, right? And then I will go into NetBeans and we can uh, we can draw that. So my idea for the strategy example, hopefully my tablet's working. Yes, it is. Okay, let me open NetBeans up again here. And actually, I'll open a new window as well. So my idea for the strategy, right, is we have some client. This is going to be just a just a uh, um, not a fully fully laid out UML diagram, but just sort of like an idea of the classes. We have a client, right? 
with, of course, some some main file in it, right? Some main void in it. Um, and uh, the client will have some kind of, um, or I guess actually, yeah, okay, the, the client will call, right, some sort method, right? Sort method. So it's going to use an object, right, of type sort algorithm, right? Sort algorithm, right? And we want to be able to switch out which sort algorithm we're using at runtime. Right. So this is going to be an abstract class. This is not going to be any particular sort algorithm. And we can extend this right with two different sort algorithms. So, you know, we could call it, we could call it here. This will be my merge. Right. And then I'll have my heap. My heap. Right. So here we go. There's that. Right. So essentially these will all have a sort method, right? Sort method, which takes in an array, right, an int array, let's just say int, oops, int array, ARR, right, let's just say that. Um, and it, it doesn't return anything, it's just it just sorts it, right, it's, it's so it, it modifies the, um, the, the modifies clause would be it modifies the array, right, and this will be the same thing, I'll just write sort, I won't write the whole thing, sort, and sort, right, and these will give actual concrete implementations. So we say that um, the, uh, sort algorithm, right, is, uh, it has different strategies, right, we have different strategies to execute this sort, right, and it depends on what exact object of type sort algorithm was um, used here, right, was, uh, yeah, was used here. Now, you can have an extra little uh, class in between here. Um, and that's, you think actually it's more commonly how it's done is done like this, right? So instead of having a client which has some sort of sort algorithm, the client uh, interacts just with some sort of sort, sort context, right? It's just another class. This sort context actually has a private variable of, to of type, let's say, you know, alg of type sort algorithm. So you see it actually ha it stores a variable of type sort algorithm, right? And then the client just uses this context here, right? And so this is going to be like an aggregation relationship here. It's going to be a one-to-one -one aggregation relationship. It's kind of like a middleman there. Um, it's 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 not technically needed. Like the the pattern will work without it. But I think that's a pretty common thing to to have there. So again, instead of just initializing a sort algorithm, you initialize a sort context. And sort alg sort context will have like a, a, a get a, a get algorithm and a set algorithm. Right, which is going to let you set and set and get the algorithm. Uh, that's going to be particularly chosen here. Right. Um, okay, and you'll see what's going to happen. Okay, so so first of all, this is the this is it. We'll code this, right? We'll just see how it is. It's really not that complicated. And then what's going to happen to extend this to adapter is we're going to say, okay, there is there is another sort algorithm, right? Um, which will be like I don't know. We can call it um, uh, what's another heap algorithm? Insertion sort, right? Or is there is there a fancier one that we know? Bubble sort? Okay, we don't actually know that one, but let's say my bubble, right? Better word to say. Yeah, he, we have heap here. My heap, we have heap here. But So we have merge, heap, and I'll just do another one, which is just bubble. But uh, actually, sorry, not my bubble. There's just going to be bubble sort, which is some someone else, some other company made bubble sort. And we don't really want to code it ourselves. So bubble sort in this class, which is from another from another. Um, um, company and it has a different interface very importantly it has a different interface it has you know a sort sort now right sort now it takes in an int array so int array a but it also takes in to say a yeah um, but it also takes in a um, you know int number of elements num of elements right I can forget my writing a little bit there um, but you see how this API, this like this method signature is not compatible with this. I can't just call sort on bubble sort here, right? So what I need is I need to have kind of like a middleman, which is just going to convert, you know, for us, we would say int num of elements would probably be the length of the array, right? Um, and then uh, instead of sort now, we would say sort. And so we just kind of need a little way to like convert it. So we're going to use an adapter for that. But that's that's the second part. Okay, so for the first part, we're just going to implement this, right? And then we'll see what's going to happen after. Okay, so let's open up NetBeans. Um, I will uh, leave this here so I can see the 
We did. Uh, I have a new, uh, where am I? I have a new project. So I'm going to open up a new Java class. I'm going to call this uh, client, right? Or let's actually start with con. Uh, I like to start with client. I think client is a good thing to start with, right? Um, so I will, of course, zoom in. If I ever forget to zoom in, just tell me. I will, I will zoom in. Um, so what's going to happen in our in our main method? So remember, you know, I just want you to remember, this is the diagram that we're basing our, our code off of, right? Not the prettiest diagram, but there you go. Um, so what's going to happen in the main method? I like to start there. So public, public static void main strings, string um, args, right? Um, what are we going to start here? Well, we are going to have uh, an object of type sort context, right? So I'll say sort context, sort context. Uh, yeah, sort context, um, sort. I, I'll just call it sort um, equals new sort context. Right? So we'll have this, right? Now I don't have something anything of type sort context. So then I'm going to create an array. So I'll say int array arr equals, and I'll just make an int array four five seven three. We're actually not going to use this. Like we're not going to actually implement the sort algorithm in any of this, right? We're just going to do the structure. But you know we'd have some sort of int array here, right? Um, and then what we would do is we would call you know sort dot well i shouldn't call it sort so sort um um method right sort method so or sort strategy i just call it sort strategy because it's a strategy right equals sort um strategy dot sort and we'd pass in some array oh sorry let me just be clear here, right so we want to sort it but we also have to specify what kind of strategy do we want to use first right strat right so we pass in this array right but we have to specify what strategy we wanted to use first right so for example maybe i would say um sort strategy dot set strategy right to be uh set strategy i mean to be some new and we maybe we'll use my merge right my merge so it's going to be a merge sort algorithm right and now when i say sort array it's going to use merge sort but then the point is, is that now I can say, okay, but what if I don't want it to be this? What if I want my sort strategy to instead be my heap, heap sort, right? And then I want it to sort the array again, right? Or maybe a, okay, a different array probably, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, right? So I can, the, the point is I can do this on at runtime, right? I, or I can just like, you know, change this here, um, which exact sort algorithm I'm going to use. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of the point. So I'm going to add a um, sort context, right? I'm going to add a sort context. Uh, I'll make it a public, public class. And the most important thing about the sort context is that it contains a private sort algorithm, uh, which I'll call sort algorithm or alg. There you go. Right. And we can initialize this to something by default. Um, Probably is best to initialize it to something by default. You don't have to actually. It's okay, right? Um, and the all we have other than this, right, is uh, well, we could actually just make the constructor take in a sort algorithm. Actually, is that what I do here? Um, no, yeah, I guess I could make the constructor take in a uh, a like potentially take in what's it called a a um, method a strategy, right? A, a particular sort algorithm. Um, doesn't really have to. Yeah, we don't have to do that. It's okay. Um, so, yeah, I guess. Okay, I will set it to something to begin with, but you don't have to. I'll just say, let's just say new my merge. Let's just say by default, it's the merge sort, right? And we can we can change it after. You can change it after by doing public, by adding your, your setters and getter, method, right? So if I just, I can just insert the code. Setter and getter. Right, so there we go. Right, so there's our... Um, setter and getter method. And that's all we have in the context, right? That's all we have in the sort context. So the client interacts with the sort context. So now uh, let's let's go ahead and actually implement these, like you know, th th sorry, not implement these uh, story. That's not story. story. <laughs> sort, sort. Oh, now I have to fix all of them. <laughs> sort, sort, alg. Right. So now I have to actually implement sort alg, and that's an abstract class, right? Um, that's an abstract class here. So I'm going to say public, public, 
abstract class. Abstract class sort out. So just to recap where we are, right? I've made the client with the main file that you know does what we're expecting it to do. I made the sort context, which kind of is like controlling which sort algorithm we're using. And then here is like the you know the actual choices of sort algorithm, right? So I'm gonna create the abstract class, right? And then I'm gonna create the two children classes here, right? So the abstract class here, um, it could also just be an interface, right? It could just be an interface. Um, but all, all I'm gonna have here is public abstract abstract void. Um, I'm gonna call it sort, right? And it's going to take an int array ARR. That's all it's going to take in, right? And that's all. That's all we have here, right? Um, uh, let me I'll just check my <laughs> check my uh, code from before, but I'm pretty sure that's all I put. <laughs> Can't find it now. Sort out here. Yeah, that's all I put there before. Um, so perfect. So there we go. So that that's all you have there because we just need to guarantee that the the child classes are going to have a sort algorithm, uh, a way to implement this, right? It has to be abstract because we don't want to implement it here. So now, if I head back to our um, if I head back to our sort context, right, um, we are creating a sort algorithm which is going to be a particular type my merge, right? So we have again we have two different uh, types. Let me move this back. We have two different types of sort algorithms: my merge and my heap. And then we'll have my bubble sort in a, in a second. Um, so let's implement my merge, right? And so all my merge is going to do, uh, yeah, it was giving me. Weird. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. No, this is fine. So all my merge is going to do is, of course, it has to implement sort, right? It has to implement sort. So all it's going to do is, instead of sorting anything, I'm just going to say print uh, system. System. This is strategy, yeah. System dot out dot out dot print ln. I'm just going to say sorted with uh, my merge, right? Say exclamation point. There we go. That's all, that's all we're going to do. I'm not going to actually sort anything. Um, and then we don't need a, we don't need a constructor, uh, unless sort context is going to get mad at me. No, sort context is not going to get mad at me. Okay. Um, and then all we need is to have, uh, uh I guess I call it the set strategy, but I guess I'm going to call it set. What did I call it in, um, sort strategy? Say alg. I called it alg. So set alg, set alg, right? And then I just need a, my heap thing too. But again, all that's going to do right, is it's just going to have the sort algorithm here. That's all it's going to have. Right, this. Right, it doesn't need a constructor either. There's barely anything it needs to do. All it's going to do is just say system.out.println um, sorted with with um, uh, what's called heap sort. Right, that's all. We're not going to do anything else. Um, and uh, importantly, it has to extend my um, extend sort algorithm, right? My heap has to sort ex extend sort algorithm. My merge also has to extend sort algorithm. Right? Um, sort algorithm itself just makes sure that we're actually um, that we actually have a sort algorithm there. We can guarantee this, right? And then um, sort context is fine. So now back to here. You know, the only issue we have is that we're calling sort strategy dot sort, but sort strategy um, or sort strategy. Yeah, sort strategy, which is a sort context. I'm using a lot of words here. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll recap if that's confusing. But anyways, sort sort context has to have a sort method, and all the sort method does, right? So if I do public void sort, it has to have a sort method. All the sort does, um, it takes in an int, you know, int array a. All this method does is it passes it on to whatever the current algorithm is, right? So it's going to say alg dot sort, and it's going to be put a there. So ideally now, when we run the client, if everything's working right, whoops, what did I do? Did I say debug? I said debug. <laughs> but anyways, it's fine. So when I run the client, right, it says sorted with merge sort, sorted with, sorted with heap sort, right? And that's kind of the point of the strategy, is that I can change the strategy that I'm using at runtime, right, uh, in order to do this. Okay, so someone asked a question. I'm still not too sure what the difference between an interface and abstract classes. They seem to be interchangeable in most cases. Yeah, they are interchangeable in a lot of cases. Not like, I don't know about most cases, but... Um, so they're definitely interchangeable when there is literally nothing else. So let me let me write this down, right? So an, you want to use an interface. Interface is just for um, it's like a contract between the interface interface and the classes which implement it, right? 
terms implement it. Right? The contract is is that um, the implementers implementers uh, have to you know provide uh, concrete implementations implementations of the you know methods in the interface. Right? All of them. Right? So the interface is only abstract methods. That's the only thing that can be an interface. Right? So I'm going to write that down here, right? Interface is only abstract methods. There's no inheritance here, right? There's nothing that... So, so the idea of an of a abstract class is that you can a child class can inherit behaviors and information from its parent. So an abstract class, class, right, is it has abstract methods in it, sure, and that the children have to be able to provide concrete implementations of that or be abstract themselves. But additionally, you know, abstract abstract class can have concrete methods which the children can call, right, and also instance variables, right, can have some access to instance variables that the children can call, as well as as um, abstract methods. So it's like both. An interface is only abstract methods, right? So it's just a contract. There's no actual substance to it. Um, but an abstract class has those abstract methods, but it also has like an actual bit of code that can that all the children can use, right? And that's it. Uh, do we have a UML symbol for implements, i.e. having classes interface? Yeah, we do. Um, my notes here. Um, the, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just implements. I think I went too far. Uh, here, this is this is from my notes. Assume that's right. There we go. So it's a dotted line with a close arrow to the interface. I think that's right. It's in my notes. I don't know. Correct me wrong. So there we go. Um. Okay. So yeah, does that answer your question about the difference between an abstract class and a yeah, it does? Okay, good. Because, uh, okay, good, good. So let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, that was, that's a good, good pause. So good question. I'm happy to answer any questions. So yeah, so now the, the code works. I mean, there's nothing else to really say. The code works. Um, when I run the client, right, what's happening in the client is that we are creating a sort context, right, which I'm calling sort strategy, right? Or it's, it's, it's very confusing to call it sort strategy. Let's just call it sort, sort, C, sort C, sort C, sort C, sort C. I think the dotted line with an open arrow is for dependency, right? Uh, I think I have that in my notes too. Yeah, a dotted line with an open arrow is for dependency. See, open arrow as in like not, so that this is a closed arrow, right? That's a closed arrow. Um, Okay, so yeah, so what's happening is that we're creating some sort of sort context, sort C. That sort context is taking in an array, right? Uh, well, we're declaring an array, and then I'm going to set the algorithm of my sort context to be a certain algorithm, right? Merge, whatever. And then the, the, the reason this is useful, right? The reason this is helpful at all is because now adding a new um, algorithm is very easy, right? I, I basically... Like, let's just come up with a, another one quickly. Like, if I just, like, if I want to add a new algorithm, I just say, okay, um, uh, shall I go back to the client and I'll just say, okay, um, I'm going to say sort C dot set algorithm. You know, let's say I have um, another insertion sort, I guess. New my insertion or insert, we'll say my insert, right? Right. And then I say sort C dot sort ARR. ASS ARR, and then um, it's saying, okay, I don't have a my insert. Okay, I'll I'll make a my insert. My insert has to, of course, extend sort algorithm, right? It also has to have a, a sort method, right? So let's do that. It doesn't have to have a constructor, and then all I need to do is just implement it. Right? But for our sake, for this for this live stream, we'll just say you know system dot out dot print ln, right? Um, sorted sorted with um, in or my insert, my insert, right? And I can now run the client, ideally, if I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I can now run the client, and there you go. I've added a new 
a new method for insertion, right? And I can switch back to different methods. Right? So the, the point of lots of these uh, design patterns is like, you know, modifiability, right? Can I change the code without having to recompile, retest a bunch of other pieces of code, right? So throughout all this, notice I added a whole new method. I, I changed two things. I changed the client and I added new a new class. I didn't actually touch any pre-existing code there, right? So that's really good. You don't want to touch any pre-tested code, right? You don't want to have to do that. Um, so yeah, so that's that's that. Now, um, any questions about this before I before I keep moving? Because I'll do the adapter now. Okay, sounds good. So, um, now let's say that I have this you know algorithm here called you know bubble sort, right? Someone else coded it. I don't know how to code bubble sort. That's pretty. I don't know how to code bubble sort, but this guy did. I can download this class, right? I can, I can download this class. And the class looks like this. I'll just type it out. Let's pretend I can't type it out for a second. But let's say I, I have a class that looks like this. New uh, Java class. Uh, it's going to be called uh, bubble sort, right? So a different name pattern on purpose because it's not us who made it, right? And bubble sort just has you know a, a single method which is uh, public void uh, sort now. And this takes in an int array a a and an int num of element, right? Um, and then this, you know, this just does, um, it just say system dot out dot int ln. Uh, uh, just, you know, sorted with bubble sort, you know, other company. Let's say another company coded this, right? <laughs> So a different company's code. This is not our code, right? So pretend like this is what was given to me, right? This is some other company coded bubble sort. I want to now implement this, but I can't just I can't just create an object of type bubble sort because first of all, bubble sort doesn't doesn't um, extend search uh, uh, sort algorithm, and also the, the method API is wrong, right? And I can't edit this. Like I can't edit this code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an adapter, right? So I'm gonna add on, right? I'm gonna create here. Go to my, go back to my client, right? Let's say. I want to call this. I'm going to say sort c dot set algorithm. I'm going to say um, new my bubble. Right? I don't know how to code bubble sort. I'm going to use this other person's code. But right now, I'm just going to pretend like I can I can implement it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know say my bubble. My bubble extends sort algorithm. Right? My bubble extends sort algorithm. Again, I don't need the constructor, and it has to have a sort method because that's the whole point of extending sort algorithm. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, okay, my bubble is going to contain a private bubble sort bubble, right? Equals new bubble sort, right? It's just going to take in a, uh, it's just going to have an instance variable of type bubble sort. Bubble sort, remember, is the code that was given to us from another company. And this, all this sort is going to do is it's going to just like delegate that to the sort algorithm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, okay, uh, bubble dot sort, or it's actually, sorry, it's sort now right sort now is the actual api sort now and it doesn't just take in the array right it takes in the array and i'll say ar dot length right right ar dot length right so it'll send in the length of the array that we want to sort and so you see we have like a kind of like a middleman here right to uh access this and all it's doing is it's just delegating and saying okay my bubble what does my bubble do when when you call sort on it it just delegates the sort there right it delegates the sort to Bubble dot sort now. Uh, we could also create the bubble sort object in the sort int array method, right? Or is that not the proper thing? The bubble sort object, so this one, right? In the sort int array method. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to create it here? Yeah, um, you could, I guess, but I think that's not the, I think that's not, yeah, you normally you instantiate variables outside the methods, yes. So this is the, this is the pattern. Um, that would work what you're saying. That would work. It would work. I don't know. It would work. But I think that the pattern is this. The pattern is you, because you have to have that aggregation relationship, right? You have to have, so actually I didn't, I didn't even draw it. Um, so there's our bubble sort, right? But what I have in the middle here is a my bubble. My bubble, right? My bubble has a private, um, uh, what did I call it? Private bubble of type bubble sort. Bubble sort. And then, of course, it has a sort method because it has to have a sort method if it's extending this guy, right? But it contains, 
right? It contains one bubble sort and it just delegates that work off to the bubble sort. Again, I can't edit this code. I can't just change the API. It's someone else's code, right? But I can use it still by just having like an adapter in the middle here, right? And so that's the idea. That's the adapter right there, right? That is the adapter. And then this is the strategy. Actually, I guess this is the strategy. Well, I should try. This is the this is the adapter. And then this is the strategy. Okay. Okay. So that's that. Uh, could we use a constructor for sort context instead of the setters and get getters? Um for yeah, I I guess so. You could make a new um, let me look at sort context. Uh, sort context, sort context right there. Yeah. So just have a constructor. The constructor could set it initially and you could keep making new sort contexts, but I think that's not the point. I think you should just keep one sort context and then just set, have, um, you actually don't, you don't need a getter. I don't think I even called the getter once. So we don't actually need the getter. Um, but you, d you need a setter because you, the point of the whole design pattern is that you want to be able to change the sort the sort algorithm. So if you don't have a setter, if you only have a if you only have a constructor, then you can just set it once when you create the object, um, and then you can't set it again. You could create new objects of type sort context, um, but yeah, sort context. Yeah, let me look at the diagram here to show you. Sort context is like this kind of middleman. The client interacts with sort context, which has so like we don't even we don't need the get algorithm. I'll just get rid of that. Um, it, it just has, it's kind of, it's like a little middleman there. It doesn't actually need it. You could just, you could instantiate sort alg, right? The variables of type this, right? Um, but you, you just part of the, part of the um, uh, design is that you have a context here, right? That the client actually interacts with. And it's actually kind of like an adapter, right? It's, it's actually just, it's working like an adap adapter because it just takes in, um, uh, it just takes in the, the um, array and then it just calls sort uh, on the algorithm that's chosen. It's actually acting exactly like an adapter, right? So the thing, so when you say the sorter, I think you mean like the actual thing doing the sorting and that would, the actual thing doing the sorting are the child classes here, right? These ones, my, my merge, my heap, and then my bubble, but my bubble's really delegating the work off to bubble sort, right? So these are the actual sort of sort algorithm is just an abstract class, which ensures that all of these have the same method. And sort context is kind of just like an adapter, but it's just part of the design patterns. You have a you have a context there, and the client interacts with the context. It's just better form for whatever reason. I, I don't really know what the reason, but that's it. It would work without this. Okay. Um, any questions about this? I'm happy to answer anything else. So this is this is once we move on from this, that's everything I have to say about strategy and adapter. So the client's view of the sorter is the sort context and the algorithm used for sorting is specified by sort alg object being used by sort context. Yeah, the specific, yeah, yes. So the client's view of the sorter, the whole sorting thing is sort context and the algorithm used for sorting is specified by which sort alg object is being used by the sort context. Yeah, that is correct. That makes sense to me. Okay. Um, so if there's nothing else, then that's everything I have to say about strategy and adapter. Although again, I'll mention probably that adapter shows up a lot right? because you just kind of want to delegate responsibility to something else. Um, but that's everything for now. Uh, I will open up my next one, which is, uh, I guess I'll do the factory stuff. So I have some factory stuff prepped here, but I'm going to be honest, I have to, I'm going to have to read this one, right? So I'm going to open up, going to, uh, sorry, actually close all of these guys close all this uh oh actually cancel so I, I guess we can is anybody interested in seeing the code after i mean i can send it i guess i uh, actually i can close all these um i don't mind I'll, I'll probably post it on yeah sure okay so i'll i'll if some people would like some three people said the exact same message so that means uh, you're all in sync um but that's uh <laughs> that's uh that's good i will i will post it on syE after um and if anybody doesn't have access to that maybe i'll put it in the description of the video too you can put it there it's fine with me just put it there. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the factory stuff here. Now, I actually I do have to actually um, quickly launch all of these. Can I just grab the whole 
thing and put it on a separate window? Yeah, I can put it there, but is it gonna, am I gonna have to do this individually for everyone? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Can I, can I like, does anybody know? Oh, there you go, no, that's working, that's working. Okay, I can launch all of these, there you go. So I can open all of these. There we go, there we go. Um, so I have my code there now, I can, I can open this. I'll actually make a new package and I'll call this, um, um, oh no, what? Yeah. Final lab dot new package. Yeah. I'll call it dot. Sorry. Yeah. I will for sure zoom in. Um, uh, what are we doing now? Factory. Yeah. Right. So let me show you my design for factory method. Bring this up to, so my design for factory method, uh, that is not that. Oh, find the thing here. There we go. So factory method. What we have, let me describe what we have here. So factory, give me the factory description. And then afterwards, we're going to have, we're going to see how we extend this to abstract factory. That's a, a little bit too big. There we go. So for factory, um, I'll just give you a description. So you are a, you know, car making car dealership. That's probably a better way to <laughs> phrase again, not car making company. Car dealership, um, or you run a car dealership. You run a car dealership, right? You offer, right, uh, two different uh, types of cars, right? Uh, that's economy and luxury, right? Um, each uh, car must have the correct type of gearbox. Right, either manual for the economy cars and automatic for for the um, luxury cars. Luxury cars, right? Um, so we want to um, have a you know we want a you know sell car method, which will sell a car. Um, of the specified specified type with the uh, with the correct gearbox right okay so that is kind of the the whole premise that we have here so let me show you how I approach the UML diagram for this so the UML diagram is first of all we are going to have uh, an abstract class for car Right, because there's two different kinds of cars. So we're going to have an abstract car class, right? Then, um, yeah, that's fine. So then we are going to have two different kinds of cars, right? We're going to have a economy car. So eco economy car, right? And we are going to have a luxury car. Deal with the methods in a section, a second. Luxury car. Okay, and they will of course inherit from car. The client is the dealership, right? The client. The client just wants to be able to make a car and call sell car on this on this car. So the car, this client is going to use a car, and the cars have to have a uh, sell car method. Sell car, right? Which will you know create the correct um, correct car, right? And it's going to create the, with the correct gearbox, right? So the luxury cars, right? Well, the economy car and luxury car are going to just inherit that sell car method. This is not going to be abstract. This is going to be a concrete operation. Here. And that concrete operation is going to call make, um, yeah, um, well, it's going to call make gearbox, right? So here we're going to have some gearboxes over here, right? There's going to be different types of gearboxes, right? gearbox right and we're going to call the, there's two different kinds of gearboxes so manual right and automatic right so we have this right uh, and they will of course inherit from gearbox so we want to make sure that both of the cars are able to make a gearbox. So what we're going to do is we're going to guarantee, we're going to put an abstract class in here called make gearbox, gearbox, right? It will 
return a gearbox, right? And it's abstract, abstract, because we want the types of cars, which specific type of car, we want that class to decide which gearbox we want to um, create, if it's the manual one or the automatic one. So since this is being enforced here, we have to, of course, put it in our cars here. It's getting a little bit messy. So let me, uh, can I do that a little bit? Mm, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Something. Um, and then I'll put, uh, yeah. <laughs> so then I'll put this. It's not, not the straightest lines I've ever drawn, but uh, let's say the client decides which gearbox for the car to use. In that case, would you use a bridge pattern instead of the factory? Um, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, because because the client is deciding which combination of car and gearbox to use. It and it's not like you know for here it's like economy has to go with manual and luxury has to go with automatic. But if you can mix and match. Um, then, uh, then I guess that is bridge pattern. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so there we have that. Uh, then we'll have, uh, we also have to have a make, you know, we have to have a make gearbox over here too. Right. Let's put this guy in. Okay. And there's no, there's no methods or anything in the gearbox stuff because we don't know what it has to do. We just have to create an object of the correct type. That's all it is. Right. So. That's kind of our idea here, right? The sell car method necessarily is going to call gearbox, make gearbox. Right. Um, yeah, bridge is behavioral, you're right. So someone just said bridge is behavioral though. So we're trying to use a creational pattern here. So this is definitely, yeah, factory is definitely creational. It's definitely about creating objects of the right type. But uh, what Parthraj said is like, okay, if you, uh, if you if you want the client to be able to decide which combination, so the actual subclasses don't have to make the decision anymore. So at that point, it's not a creational design pattern; it's a behavioral design pattern. You're changing the behavior. The client is deciding what behavior the, the classes should have, right? Um, uh, so yeah, so it's not. So that but that would be correct. What what Parth said is still is still correct, I think. Um, I gotta put a you know a little asterisk on everything. I think it's who knows. Um. So there we go. That is, uh, that's the UML diagram, you know, the, not the whole thing, but that's the basic UML diagram for what's going to happen here. Um, and again, very importantly, sell car is going to call make gearbox, right? That's the whole point. If it didn't, then we'd have no need for it. Um, uh, but this example, isn't uh, economy car creating multiple gearboxes? Uh, no, it would just create one, but this example, isn't an economy car creating multiple gearboxes though? No, it should be just, it's just making one. It's just going to make the correct one. It just make the correct one of these two. And it decides which one's the correct one. Well, the way we program. So, unless I misunderstood your question, in which case, just ask again. So, would there be a dependency relationship between the type of car and its corresponding gearbox? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, the economy car, that, like, I didn't do the full UML diagram here. But, yeah, technically, you know, there's a dependency because... Uh, the each of these are going to call the constructors of the the correct uh, type of gearbox. So the luxury car will call the constructor of the automatic gearbox, and the economy car will call the constructor of the manual gearbox. And that's that. There you go. So we have um, we can go into the code now, right? We can try to work this out. So uh, I'll open up my other code as well. So let's begin with what the client will see. Right, what the client will see. I like I like to start with that. I think that's a good place to start because it kind of gives you like a, a path to go by. Um, so I'll call it client. All right. Be nice if I could spell client. Whoops. Now it's creating everything in another window. That's fantastic. There we go. Oh no. What's that? No. Can I can I get it like that? Close that. Okay. There we go. So um, we're going to have in the client class we're going to have public. Uh, Public, static, void, main. I always forget the order of the string args. There we go. Um, and in this class, let me open up what I did for the client before. In this class, all that we have, right, is we want to create a, the, the client is the dealership. So it just wants to create a car, right? Car, let's say new, 
luxury car, right? And we want to say C dot sell car, right? And then afterwards, we want to say C equals new economy car, right? And then we want to say C dot sell car. And we want to somehow in the sell car method, I'm going to show that we're creating the correct gearbox, right? It'll somehow show. Okay, so let's begin coding some more stuff. So in the car class, right, it's a public public abstract class car. And all the car class has, right? Let me show you what the car class has. Oh yeah, the way I did this is um, uh, I, let me see what the client said. Yeah. The way I did the car class, right, is I just, I, I wanted to somehow store the kind of car it is. So I'm just gonna say public string type. Right? And then the constructor for car, so I'm gonna say public. So the only reason we need a constructor is because I wanna just store the type of car. So public car is just going to take in a string type and we're just gonna say this dot type equals type. That's all, that's all. So the, otherwise the constructor is useless. It doesn't do anything, right? Uh, you, can have, you can have a constructor for an abstract class. Um, you wouldn't instantiate this specific one, but you can have, um, you can, when you create a subclass, it's still calling the constructor. You can't create a car, but when you create a subclass, it's still going to call the constructor. Um, so public void sell car is the whole point, right? We want the car, each car to have a way to sell car. So what we want is that we want, um, let me make sure I'm the right thing here. Yeah. So what we want the sell car to, and remember, this is not abstract. This is an actual method that's going to, we're going to, you know, sell the car, right? And each of the types of cars are going to inherit this, right? Uh, you can, because we'll be using it as reference. We won't need it instantially. Yeah, exactly. So um, in the sell car method, we want, first of all, a gearbox, right? We want a gearbox, gears, I'll call it, equals make gearbox, right? I'm not going to say which gearbox here. I'm going to leave that up to make gearbox, right? Make gearbox, the, the exact type of gearbox that's returned depends on which car is calling this, which, which car is call, calling sell car. Because now I can just say system.out.println, uh, and I can just say an example like uh, sold car of type, and I'll just say plus type plus uh, with, um, uh, with uh, plus, uh, plus space, with, and I'll just put, you know, what kind of gears we have. There we go. So everything the sell car is going to do is going to print it, but it'll just show us that we have the right type and the right gears. That's the whole point. We have the right type and the right gears. Right? So let's go ahead. Oh, yeah. And then the last thing we need in cars is we just need to make sure that the car is going to create the, there's going to, the, each individual concrete car will have a method called make gearbox. So public abstract gearbox make gearbox. Right, so it's going to return a gearbox, right? Okay. So that's everything for the car class. So now let's go ahead and um, make the gearbox class, right? So the gearbox actually has nothing, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it has nothing. Uh, uh, close the list. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah, because gearbox is a variable. That's true. Uh, how did I do it in the thing here? Uh, oh, I had gears that get name. I made a get name. That's it. All right there, you go. Gears that get name, and then I think in the actual type of gears, I had a yeah. I just I just again there you go. So I just had a gears that get name. That's that's everything. Yeah, need a two string for gearbox. That also works. It's the same thing. Right. Yeah. Um. I could override the two string method. I could call the get name method. It doesn't really matter. I did it by get name. Um, so anyways, the gears, the specific implementations of gears have to have this. That's fine. So, um, oh yeah. And then that means in the gears, in the gearbox. Interesting. I did it a little bit, I did it a little bit incorrectly before actually, but it's okay. The, the, I mean, it worked, so it's fine. Anyways, that is that. Let's go to, why is this giving me an error? Oh, it just doesn't like get name. Okay, that's fine. Gearbox. Uh, all Gearbox has, you can say public, public abs, abstract class Gearbox. We just want to enforce that it has a get name, right? So public abstract vo, uh, string 
get name. Right? We that, That's all we want. We just want to enforce that every type of year has a get name method. Um, okay, so there's that. That's everything here. So let's go back to the client. What's wrong here? So luxury economy car, right? We got to figure this out. Now also, um, make gearbox. Yeah, make gearbox. Well, we have to sp specify which type, like the specific cars, right? So if I go here in luxury car now, right? Luxury car doesn't need a constructor. Luxury car is you know, missing something because it's extending car, but it does not implement um, the correct methods, right? I still have an error. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I, wait, let me just see what I wrote here in client. Why does it need a type? That's weird. Why do I need to take in a, oh, super, because the super, yes, because it's extended. Yes, see, <laughs> that makes sense. So it has to call the super, right? So whenever you, whenever you have a, a method here, which has a, a, a constructor, right? Whenever you have a class, which has a super class with a constructor, you need to call that super, like you need to somehow deal with that. So the type, um, is that what I wrote here for the other one? Let's see, luxury car. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, oh yeah, yeah. But the thing is here with luxury car, we don't actually want to take in anything. We just want to set the type specifically, specifically to luxury car. Right. That's that's all, because that there's no var variable there. Right. There's no variable there. It's not like we're taking in a different kind of luxury car. We're just saying luxury car. That's the car type. Right. And then make gearbox. Right. Well, we have to return new. And so for a luxury car, we're going to say automatic. Right. Return new automatic. And that's it for luxury car. Right. So I'll have to create an automatic. But let's do the let's do the. Um, oops, not run. Let's do the uh, economy car now. So economy car, same thing, right? So economy car, all we're gonna do in the in the constructor is we're just gonna say super. And instead of putting a variable in, we're just, it's always gonna be economy car. That's all it's gonna be. Right? And then since it's extending car, it needs to implement the make gearbox. That's the whole point is that it has to, it has to implement make gearbox and it has to return the correct gearbox. So new um, manual. Right, and there we go. So the only thing we have left to do is actually make automatic and manual gearboxes, and um, all that is. I don't remember how I did that? Is there anything I did that was fancy? No, just name. So um, the only thing I don't I don't need to I don't need a constructor. Um, the only thing I need here is just get name, right? And get name is just going to return for automatic. It'll just return automatic. Right, that's all. That's all that will do, and then in manual, right, it's gonna be the same thing. We just we don't need a constructor, and then we need to have the get name method, right? And here we'll just return manual gearbox. gearbox. So it should be done. I think should work. Uh, I need a semicolon there. Um, let's try to run it. If it doesn't work, then I just missed something, but let's just, let's just try to run it. So there you go. Seemed to work pretty well. Let me just, before I look into it, I'll just, uh, add a space there. Okay. So let me run it again. There we go. So let's look at what's happening in the client. The client, we are creating a new luxury car and then we're selling that car. It says sold car of type luxury with automatic gearbox, sold car of type economy car with manual gearbox. So you see, I don't need to specify the client doesn't need to specify what type of gearbox. The subclasses know what type of gearbox to make. That's the whole point of the factory method, right? Is that uh, the factory method pattern. The whole point is that, the, again, the client does not need to specify which gearbox needs to be created there, right? In fact, they shouldn't even have the option to specify because you need those pairs. There's specific pairs and you need those pairs. Um, and, uh, and so we do it like this, right? So I can sell the car. We just create the car and sell the car without having to specify anything. Okay, and so that is our factory method pattern. Factory method pattern. I will extend this to abstract factory. But any questions so far? Yeah, I had a question. Yep, go ahead. 
Yeah, so, so basically the factory pattern is referring to, uh, so any object must have like a, like a correlating object of a different class, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's basically what the factory method is. Yeah, it has to create, it has to create a specific object of another class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just to make sure, car would be called the creator for this. Yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, car would be the creator. And then the the factory method is make gearbox. That's the factory method. You need to specify what the factory method is. That's the factory. Method. And very importantly for factory method is is you you have to have another operation here, right? You have to have another operation here that's actually going to call this because otherwise there's no point. So is abstract factory really just a factory that produces more than one product? Yes, that is what abstract factory is. But I'll show that in just one second. Right. Um, okay. If there's no more questions, I'll move on to abstract factory. We'll see. Okay. So for abstract factory, you're going to see how similar it is. Abstract factory. Um, same thing. Additionally, so this is this is all the same. I'll highlight the new stuff. So, dish additionally, right? Highlighted in blue. Additionally, um, each car must have the correct type of stereo system. Um, what do they call it? Uh, normal stereo, normal stereo for economy cars, and Bose stereo for luxury cars. Bose, yes, there you go. So that's it. That's the only difference is that now each time I say sell car, I don't just need to make one correct object. I need to make two correct objects or n correct objects. Doesn't matter how many. You could put another thing after this. And that's still abstract factory. So the idea is, it's just you're doing a factory method, but you just have multiple factory methods. That's it, you just have multiple. So if I draw the diagram for this, it's gonna be almost identical, right? It's gonna be almost identical. You have this, but how I like to draw it. Now, for some reason, textbooks like to draw it, this whole crisscross thing. I think this is a much better way of looking at it like this. So what I'm gonna do is just move this aside a little bit. What I need now, let's just update this a little quickly. So what I need now is that when I make a car, I don't just need to make a gearbox. I also need to make stereo, right? And it's gonna return a stereo. Here, I need to have that make stereo. I should probably type this. <laughs> I realize my writing is bad. Stereo, make stereo. Stereo, right? So the cars have to decide which type of stereo they're going to make. Now, let's go ahead, move this over, let's move this to the side. Let me erase these dotted lines. It should be, should be easier if I just redraw them. So, still, economy car uses manual and luxury car uses automatic, but now we have a new kind. Is my camera blocking the? Um, we have a new kind of abstract class, and there are two implementations of it. There are um, normal stereo and uh, Bose stereo, right? So, and there, that's it. And now, economy car also uses normal stereo how about a color code this gonna get way too messy hold on so just entirely color code this come on. okay so green will be for economy car so economy car takes manual and it also makes normal stereo luxury car Makes automatic, 
And it also makes closed theory up. So it calls the constructor, so it's a dependency relationship there, right? Because what happens here depends on the constructor for here. But we leave these mostly empty, just maybe a get name, that's it. Um, and that's it, there we go. And now it's abstract factory method because we are creating the wording that's always used, which actually makes sense, is we're creating families of related classes. Let me explain what that means. When I create an economy car, this forms a family of related classes. Luxury car forms another family of created classes, uh, of related classes, right? So this is what they mean by families of related classes. All the economy ones, all the luxury ones, and you can imagine you can have other kinds, you can have sports cars, so sports and special transmission and I don't know, no stereo, you know, a sports car, you don't listen to music, I don't know. But you see, you can extend it however you want here, right? And it's creating families of related products, related classes. Would there be a dependency relationship between car and stereo and car and gearbox? Probably would be, that makes sense. I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday. I was talking with some people about it yesterday. So um, I think there would be because uh, you are, why? why, why do you need that? Um, if it was an actual implementation, wouldn't car have a gearbox and car have a stereo as instance variables? Um, probably, but that's not part of the, that's not part of the design pattern. You're right though. Yes, probably, probably car would have a gearbox and have a stereo. That's true. But again, that's not part of the design pattern. So I'm not going to include that, but yeah, that's like contextually accurate. Um, I don't know. I'm a little iffy about if there's a dependency relationship here, because if you look at the car class, right? Uh, where am I here? If you look at the car class, due to those instances with your car, but like, I, oh, I have a gear. I have a gear in my car class. And then I'd also have, I think maybe, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think it's because of this right here, the client, the client, the client doesn't have anything to do with the client just has car. That's all the client has. But this method, this car method uses a gears class. That's dependency. Yeah. So, so yep. Yeah. And then this car method is also going to use, um, stereo. We'll see in a second, right? We'll see how we extend it. So let's begin implementing this, right? What we're going to do is in the client, the client doesn't have to do anything different, right? The client, we, should, we don't have to edit the client because all the client is doing is making a car, selling a car. We have to make it so that the luxury car creates the correct stereo system. So let's go to the car class. I also want to, when I sell the car, I also want to make a stereo, stereo equals make stereo. Again, the make stereo method will be implemented by the children classes, right? So I also need a, you know, make stereo here to guarantee that the children will be able to make the correct stereo. And then I just want to add into here, just say, you know, um, uh, add space and space, um, stereo dot stereo dot get made. Uh, that's fine, whatever, I'll just, and I, I know I'm going over the line, but it doesn't matter. Um, there we go. So all I've done is I've just added, you know, stereo.getName to the actual print statement to see if we're doing everything right. And then I've added that we're creating a stereo. Now I have to make the stereo, right? So all the stereo class is, is public abstract class. And I just made it, shouldn't be of, shouldn't be of type stereo. What should be of type stereo? Uh, shouldn't it be of type stereo? Uh, car here. Here's type stereo. Make stereo. Oh yes, this should be of type stereo. This should be of type stereo, for sure. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, so uh, the actual stereo class. What did I put? I just put uh, just yeah. I just put. I just want to guarantee that the stereos have a, a public abstract. Uh, a string get name. That's all I need, right? That, that's that's the only thing I need. It could be an interface, right? It could be an interface. This is the same thing. Um, but car could not be an interface, right? Car could not be an interface because I have a whole cell car method. Um, yeah. Then uh, automatic. That's nothing. Uh, the, the, sorry, I'm in the wrong thing. Uh, stereo. I need to make a 
um, type of stereo. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. So in the in the luxury car, let's start actually with the economy car, right? What kind of stereo am I going to make? Well, I'm going to make right the normal stereo. That's what we called it, right? So I'm going to say here it's going to return new normal normal stereo, right? Return new normal stereo. I haven't made the normal stereo yet, the class, so it's giving me an error, but it's fine. I'll make it in a second. And then the luxury car, it's also giving me an error because I have to override this stereo method, this make stereo method. And here I'm going to return new Bose, Bose stereo. All right, that's it. Now we got to make the Bose stereo and the um, normal stereo, right? That's the whole point. So the uh, the only thing that these methods have to do, sorry, not methods, I keep calling them methods, classes. The only thing they have to do is they have to have a supported get name method. That's everything. So here I will just say um, return, return, return. There we go. Nice if I can spell. Um, Bose. Oh, sorry. This is normal stereo. Normal stereo. Uh, I guess I won't put an exclamation point. Just put that. Then uh, in Bose stereo, you know, again, I don't need a constructor. Constructor doesn't do anything. And then I just need to implement this get name method. Can I just do that? Yeah, that's a lot easier. Um, return uh, Bose stereo. Stereo. There we go. And that should be it. Let's try it. Let's run the client. Run the file. And there we go. So you see the luxury car makes the Bose stereo. The normal the, the economy car makes the normal stereo. I didn't have to specify that as the client, right? I didn't have to specify that. It's just, it's just automatically when I make a luxury car, I've created a family of related classes. Luxury car, automatic gearbox, and Bose stereo are a family of related classes. They all go together. Economy car, manual gearbox, and normal stereo. That's a family of related classes. So they all go together as well. And so there we go. I have that. Um, there's our, uh, there's our UML diagram. So again, you can imagine I'm extending this with a bunch of different products. I'm imagine, you can imagine I'm extending this with a bunch of different types of cars, right? So you see, let's let's see. I added a new a new um, product, and let's see what did I, what code did I have to edit? So you want to edit minimal code. So I didn't have to edit the client ca class. I had to edit the car class. Right? Um, I didn't have to touch economy car or luxury. Car. Sorry, no, I did have to touch those. I did have to touch those because I have to make the right stereo. <laughs> I have to make the add the make stereo method, right? Um, I didn't have to touch the other, the gearboxes though. Gearboxes stay the exact same. So other products are not affected by this, right? All the other products. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, so I had to touch a good amount of code there, but I didn't have to touch the products, right? So there's something I didn't have to touch. I didn't have to touch the, the products there, like the other products. And you can imagine if there's like 50 products and you don't want to, you don't touch any of those to add a new product. Um, just out of curiosity, let's see what happens. How much code do I have to touch? What if I want to add another another car, right? If I, if I want to add another car, I haven't, I didn't do this in tested code. So let's just try it, try it now together. Like I didn't, I didn't pre write this code. So let's, let's add a sports car, right? How much code do I have to touch if I add a sports car? So a uh, sports car. Car. So uh, yeah, let's see. So we're going to have to make gearbox. Gearbox, right? We're going to have to make um stereo right um that's fine right um and uh that's it that's all that goes in sports car let's say like let's say it also has it depends on how you do it like you can say you can say right now it also has automatic transmission that's fine um yeah let's say let's say it it has some sort of i don't know sports transmission i don't know <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know if there's a, such a thing as a sport transmission, but maybe there is. So we'll just say that. And then let's say it has a Bose stereo. How about that? So it has its own type of uh, gearbox, but it just has a Bose stereo. Right? So what has to change? What like yeah, what has to change here to, to be able to add this? So I definitely have to, um, uh, let's see. So I, in my client class, 
I'm going to have to, you know, C equals new uh, sport car, sport, sports car. Right. Um, and then C dot cell car. Right. So sports car has to extend car. Right. So we're here. Doesn't need, oh, it actually does need a constructor. Oops. So it needs a constructor and it needs to uh, call uh, super and um, uh, sport car. Sports car. Uh, then it has a bunch of things it needs to implement. So it has to make gearbox and it has to make transmission or make uh, make stereo. Right. So um, make stereo, we're going to say return new uh, Bose stereo. Right, uh, like that, and then make gearbox. We're gonna say return new uh, sport transmission. Right, sport. So let's go ahead with this here. Sport also has to extend gearbox. Uh, this does not have to have any constructor. Sport just has to have a get name method, and all I'll do, all I'll do in this in this one is um, return um, uh, sport. sport. There we go. And that should be it. I can probably now run it. And sports car with sports gearbox and both stereo. All right, there we go. So we found another family of related classes. So what did I have to edit there? I had to edit my client to add the new thing, but that doesn't really matter. The client can be edited, so it doesn't matter. Um, car, no, car didn't have to be edited. Um, I just had to add the new type of stereo. So, uh, new, new type of transmission, I mean. Where is it? Sport, right? But I didn't have to edit any pre-existing code. And I had to add the type of car. So you see, adding new factories, adding new types of cars, right? That's okay, right? There's, it actually doesn't, I barely have to touch any code. Adding new products, well, not even adding new products. I can add, I can extend, make different types of the same product, but adding completely different classes of products, that does take a little bit of extra code. So you do have to edit there. It's a little bit hard to do that. But adding new types, you know, combinations, you can think of, you can think of each like, each child of the car class as a specific combination of gearboxes and stereos, right? And they form a family of related classes. And more generally, you can think of each of these children as a specific combination as of all the different types of products and however many of them there are, right? Um, and uh, and so, yeah, so that's how you can think of, you can think of the car class like that. And there we go, that's it. That's the, uh, that's the abstract factory method, abstract factory pattern you hear that? so any questions about this or anything we've talked about so far you can talk to ask of course you can feel free to ask about previous patterns as well okay we can we can move on to the bridge pattern the bridge pattern i um i'm a little iffy about how i did it i don't know if i fully did it perfectly but if anybody has any ideas you know i i think it's right this is what i think is the like what i think i coded is right you know i don't like bridge pattern yeah it's a little complicated it's a little complicated so um my idea for the bridge pattern let me actually do the same thing i did just now i, I will have to read definitely have to read my code for this i can't this i can't come up with so let me give me just one second here to um get all my bridge stuff going let me just close all this there we go and i okay that's just the output that's fine so uh bridge this is prep yeah there we go so i want to just make this another window and then if i say this yes good there we go okay so i have all the code here and then in new package oh yeah i didn't have to do that i did it kind of weird before okay anyways um new package i will call this one bridge i know very creative so let's create a client and then i will talk about what we actually want to do in this uh this one let me just get it like set up properly here and then if i run the client is the output going to show up or did i just hide my output Public static void name string. Okay. 
system dot out dot ln. Run file. Yeah. Okay. For some reason it high. Uh, so make it not do this. Can I, can I make this like there you go. That's what I want to do. Okay, we're good to go. Now. Okay. So um. And then print yeah. Print public site. Okay, that's fine. Then anyways, it it works now. So that's good. So bridge pattern. This is the prompt that I will work with here. So um you are a you are a uh TV and remote control uh uh company. I don't know. There you go. It's okay, so it's an interesting company. Um you are testing three types of remotes. Three types of remotes? What did I say? I forget. Is it three or two? Let me find what I said before. Uh, you are testing two types of remotes. Two types of remotes. Controls. Run controls. Uh so universal remote and generic remote. Okay. Uh, these two remotes can uh, turn on the TV. This is an on method. With on, say that. Uh, they can, you know, turn off the TV with off. They can set channel on the TV with int channel. Um, and uh, I guess I say set 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 the channel with set channel, and only the universal remote can um you know uh, increment the channel with next channel. Okay, so only the universal remote has this. Um. You are testing these remotes with three different types of TVs. We have uh, Samsung TVs, uh, Sony TVs, and Toshiba TVs. Um, okay, so there we go. You want you want to you know, you want each type of remote to support operation with each type of TV. So there is our prompt. Um, yeah, there's our prompt. So I guess I should add some more things here. So the, the TVs have a uh, activate and deactivate method. And they also have uh, a tune, tune method. The tune method is used to set the channel, right? Uh, let me just see if there's anything else the TVs have. That's it. OK. You want each type of remote to support operation with each type of TV. There we go. Um, the generic remote only controls one type of TV. The generic remote, well, any remote can only control one TV at a time, but any of the TVs, okay? Any of the TVs. That's why I didn't say like Samsung remote and Samsung uh, or, and Sony remote, right? If I did that, then it would be, it would be like a factory method because the Samsung remote has to go with the Samsung TV. But I have a universal remote and I have a generic remote, both of which can use with, work with any TV, right? That's the idea. So let's go ahead and start to draw the UML diagram for this. All right. So I'll just make it a little smaller so that we can actually see what we're writing. So the we'll start with remotes, right? We'll start with remotes here. So we have an abstract class remote, which has two subchildren, so or sub subclasses, uh, universal remote right universal remote 
and uh, then then uh, the other one, which is uh, generic mode. Okay, there's this. Drew them a little bit big, but that's okay. Um, then we have TVs, right? So let's call it TV. So abstract class. Right, abstract class TV. Uh, it could be an interface. Doesn't matter. And we have two children, or three children: Samsung, uh, Sony, and Toshiba. And these each inherit from TV. TV can be an interface here. It doesn't matter. Now, I want to use any combination here. That's the thing. That is the thing that is the bridge pattern here, is that I want to be able to use any combination of remote with TV, right? And I need this for my testing purposes, whatever, right? And so the way that we're going to do this is using the bridge pattern. And the bridge pattern would tell us that, okay, then contain every remote should contain a TV, whichever TV it's particularly attached to. Uh, so the abstraction is TV and the implementation is remote. Uh, other way around. The abstraction is remote and the implementation is TV, I'm pretty sure. So the formal statement of what the bridge pattern is, is where you, you want to be able to, um, you want to be able to vary the abstraction and the implementation independently, right? So, I mean, if you did it the other way, then I think you would just, you would just draw the, the triangle on the other side, right? Make RC the absolute, remote control the absolute, the abstraction and TV. That is how, that is how I would say we're doing it now. Yes, I would say we're doing now, remote control is the abstraction and TV is the implementation. Because remote control is the actual object we're going to create. We're going to create a remote control object. And the remote control object is going to call methods in TV, right? That's the thing. And so that's why I would say this is the abstraction because this is the actual object we're creating. And then it's going, it's going to create TV objects as well, but it's going to call methods there. That's the important thing. That's the whole thing. Yeah, you could do it either way, depending on how you code it. Absolutely. You could do it either way. Um, but I think it just makes sense, like, visually for the example, like, you're going to hold the remote and you're going to activate the TV, right? So remote is the object, right? Um, okay. So that is the that is the UML diagram I'm ready to go with. Um, so now what methods have to be supported in here, right? So the they both have a on and an off method. They both have a set channel. Oh, yeah, set channel method. Well. I don't actually have to put it here because both all remotes have this. So I can say on, off, right? Uh, set channel, right? And then only the universal remote has increment channel or next channel. The generic remote doesn't have this. The generic remote you can just set to a specific one. Yeah, I'll, yes. I will post these videos, not on D2L. Um, you can find, you can just search my name, not John Luca. You can search my name, Adam Sava, on YouTube, and I'll post it there. Um, I don't know if Rest is posted. Is this even recording for Rest? I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, I was told it would automatically record, but I'm recording myself. So, whatever. Oh, it's not recording for, for Zoom, but whatever. It's fine. Um, there we go. Yeah, I will post it here. That's it. I'll post it here after. Um, so, and I'll put that, I should put that on the scrolling text on the bottom, actually. Um, so anyways, here we have this, that is, this is all correct. Generic remote can only do whatever a remote could do. It can't do anything extra. Then TV has an activate, deactivate, and a tune method. The tune method takes in an int channel. Right, uh, let's write a little bit clear. Tune, there we go. Um, and let me check if there's anything else I have to add to these things. Um, nope, nope, that's it. 
and they just provide things with it. Yeah. Should we have a TV variable in remote? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I just didn't get to that yet. Absolutely. So the remote will have a private TV TV. Right? We'll have a private TV. That is, that is right there. Absolutely. Uh, let me just look through really quickly if there's anything I'm missing. Oh, no. no. Um, yeah. Oh, and then just to just to keep track and just like to, again, this is not part of the pattern, just to keep track of the con contextual thing. Uh, yeah, TV, TV has a channel. Yeah, I guess you could store it in, you could store it in the TV. Actually, that makes more sense to store it in TV. Yeah, I stored it in the remote, but that doesn't actually make sense. You don't store channels in a remote. You store channels inside of a TV. So yeah, let's say there's a private. So that's supposed to be private here too. Right? Um, yeah, that actually makes a lot, that makes more sense to put it there. Uh, I'm going to put a private channel. No, private in. Um, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to call it channel. Channel, right? Uh, and I'm going to, uh, it's going to be a type int, int, right? It's just going to be int. And that's going to be in TV. That makes a lot more sense. So we have to have a get channel here as well. We don't actually need a get channel. No, we don't need a get channel. Never mind. Um, get channel tune channel and then. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to slightly edit the code than how I did it, but it's okay. That this makes more sense. It makes a lot more sense to put a channel in a TV than in a remote. So that's fine. Okay, so we're good to go. Of course, uh, yeah, all of these. Um, these are all abstract, right? So all these classes have to go in here, right? I shouldn't draw an arrow like that, but all these classes, uh, methods, I mean, so I'm really saying the wrong word all the time. Methods have to go in here, right? Those methods have to go in here. And um, that's it. I guess these methods also have to go in here, right? But it just inherits it. This, is, this can be a, th these don't have to be abstract. These are abstract, right? But these don't have to be abstract. Uh, in my remote class, yeah, they're not abstract. So there we go. Um, okay, so there's our class diagram. Let's start to actually code it. And uh, I'll show you the part that I'm a little iffy about, about how I'm doing it. It's about, what, what was confusing me for a long time is like, where does the client, client interact, right? So the conclusion I came to is that client will interact with remote. So client will have a remote, okay? A specific type of remote. Um, and then, yeah, okay. So in this case, don't you think it's necessary to have an abstract method in I don't think it's necessary to have abstract methods in TV. You can just make it concrete because the methods don't cha change based on the type of TV. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, just the way I made it so that we can visually see it's working is that I, I made it so that the Sony TV says Sony TV activated and Samsung TV says Samsung TV activated, right? You're absolutely right though. Yeah, like in, uh, in like, you know, other situations, but just for, for this particular, um, for this, just to make sure that we see it's working, right? Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we, we could do that. So it would do slightly different. It would just print a different print statement. Uh, client connects to remote control because remote control is used to implement the TV abstraction. Uh, but the, the, you're, you're thinking about it. The, so this is the remote control is the abstraction. Remote control is the abstraction. TV is the implementation in this case. Because again, the object, the type of object we're going to create, client, the client will have a remote object. It will say remote R equals new universal remote or something like that. Right, so that's the abstraction, and then the implementation is the TV. Is like how exactly we tune it, right? How exactly we tune this channel, which is just the different print statements. Client is interacting with the remote. Client doesn't interact with TV. The remote is the bridge between the client and TV. That makes sense. Yeah. So this is the bridge here. That's the bridge. Right. So the way I kind of described is this how I described uh, in my notes the bridge. Let me just remember which class I'm talking about here. Uh, bridge. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like state design or strategy design pattern, but both ways, right? Kind of like both ways here, right? So you can choose uh, one of these with one of these, right? You want to make sure I'm talking about the right class here. Yeah, so that's how I described my notes. It's kind of like doing it both ways. Um, okay, so let's start to actually implement this. Now, I'm actually not going to start with the client because client's the part that I, I have a little trouble with. <laughs> so uh, for now, let's leave the client empty. We can say, no, we can we can do like, actually, we'll start with something here. Remote, what did I say for the client in, the, in my test code here? Uh, 
my bridge there we go so this was what i said for um the client i said remote my remote equals new and then you make a specific pair the point is, is you can at runtime decide which pair so i'm going to say universal remote um a new sony sony tv right so again the point is that at runtime you can decide which pair you want to make and then you say my remote dot on which would be like when you click the on button you'd say my remote dot off or no, no sorry my remote dot set channel right um and then let's say my remote dot off right we're not going to do any kind of tests where like you know to change the channel the tv has to be on like it doesn't that doesn't really matter right Just skip that for now of course in a real life situation you do that the only issue i had is that remember universal remote has a dot next channel method so it felt a little weird but i remember i'm not allowed to do my remote dot next channel right I'm not allowed to do this. Let me just, uh, ah, come on. Can't type. There we go. This doesn't work. Okay. Um, okay. It, it looks like it's going to work, but I mean, none of these methods actually do anything at the moment because my remote doesn't exist and there's no remote class. But even when I implement this, um, no, next channel, that's what I tried to say there. Did I move something here? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, that's fine. There. There we go. Um, the reason is, is because only universal remote has a my remote let, let, let's leave it for now but only universal remote has a next channel button the generic remote doesn't so at the moment it looks like it's going to work let's leave it it's going to be an error before we can actually this is this line is going to cause an error and i'll show you it, it's a simple fix but it feels weird how i have to fix it um but anyways uh the rest of the code that I, i'll just copy and paste it the rest of the code is very similar actually i will uh i will uh not include the line that i that i do here so just for the moment i will do this Z, Z, and there. So the rest of the code is just uh, here. I'll just say my remote dot next channel again. Oh yeah, sorry. And then I want to set it to actually a channel. So let's say my set channel to five. In this case, here I set it. So here I have a universal remote with a Samsung TV. Here I have a generic remote with a Toshiba TV. Right. And so you see, I'm not even going to try to call next channel on generic remote because there is no next channel button on the generic remote. Fisher have to typecast it, and I think it would still be correct in that case. I think the prop didn't example like that in week 13. Okay, yeah. So you definitely have to typecast it, right? So I can I'll do that now. Thing, right? So I need to typecast my remote to type universal universal remote. Um, oops, universal remote. Um, universal remote. Yeah, that's supposed to be right. And now this would work, right? I, I'm going to leave it for now. Again, I'm not going to do that at the moment because I just want to show you the error. Like I want to show the error happening when it happens because right now nothing else is written, so it doesn't show an error. Um, but yeah, typecast it and okay, you seem to, Parthrash seems to think it's, it's okay. It's still correct in that case. Uh, it feels a little weird because then we're not treating the remote uniformly, which seems like the kind of the point, but it's okay. You know, you have a universal remote, so you know, you have to typecast it like the client. So it seems okay. Anyways, let's just keep going. Let's just keep coding this. So, uh, I'll start with remote, right? I'll start with the remote class. Um, oh, did I not? What happened? Did I not uh, create a remote? Set channel to. All right. What did it do? <laughs> no import. Oh yeah. Sorry. There's a. Apparently there's a. Uh, <laughs> there's something called remote already. So you can just ignore that. I'll just create a remote class. <laughs> so don't import remote. Apparently it's a remote exists. Some case. Anyways. Uh, public, abstract, uh, class remote. Let's see what remote does. Public abstract class remote. We have uh, current. Yeah, so we just have a, very importantly, a private TV TV. That's very important. That's the whole point, is that we the remote has a TV assigned to it. Then in the remote constructor, right? In the remote constructor, um, we have this dot uh, TV equals TV. And we're going to take in a TV TV, right, in this. Of course, there's no type TV that exists yet, but that's all we're going to have. So the remote, when it gets constructed, it's assigned a TV. Um, now I need to have, you know, public void void on, right? So that it has to be able to turn on. Like the remote is able to turn on the TV. So what it does is it just says TV.activate, right? Because the TVs are going to have an activate method. And then public void off. So these are all the functionalities that every remote should have. 
right? pv.deactivate, right? And then additionally, we would have a public void set channel um, um, int channel, int channel, right? Takes in a channel, and then we would say uh, tv dot tune to yeah, right? There it is. Okay. So that's everything for the remote class, right? Um, that's yep. Yeah, that's everything there. Uh, so the remotes are fully implemented here, right? So what we've just done in the remote class is we just put the generic behavior of a remote, right? A remote is generically able to turn on, turn off, and set channel of a TV. Of course, TV class isn't implemented yet. Let's start. Let's make the actual uh, remotes. So generic remote, um, yeah, the generic remote. Uh, let's let's do this. Um, I'll uh, go to here, I guess. A new Java class, uh, generic remote. Or I guess I should have done it from the client. Generic remote. Anyways, um, so generic remote extends remote. Right, that's an important thing. And why does it giving me? Oh, add constructor. Yeah. So the a remote remote remember has a constructor with a TV. So we need to put in a TV. So generic remote TV. This is it. This is literally the whole thing for generic remote. Remember, generic remote doesn't have any additional functionality. So when I create a generic remote, I just need to send the TV to the to the parent, right? Send the TV to the abstract parent, and then and then I'm done. That's all the generic remote does. The abstract parent handles all the actual functionality. Uh, TV is just not an object yet. And then uh, universal remote, right? So universal remote. No, not Sony TV. Whoops. Undo that. Remote. Whatever. Why? I guess we have a Sony TV now, but what I meant is a universal remote. There you go. So universal remote uh, doesn't take in a Sony TV. TV. No, it takes in a TV TV. Right? And it just calls super with the TV. That's it. Right? It just calls super with the TV. But universal remote has an additional functionality. Right? has an additional functionality. And what that functionality is, is it's public void, public void next channel, right? And it would be a super dot set channel. I don't think you actually have to say super dot. I think you just say set channel, but super dot set channel. And it would be, um, I remember how, okay, so TV, so how I did this before, is I put the channel in the remote. Because if I do this, I can say current channel plus one here. But I can't do that now because the current the channel is held in the TV. So I need to get the channel from the TV. So I could do that means I need to store the oh I have the TV. So I could say TV dot get channel plus one. That would work. Because uh don't I have why is this not Flip operands of plus. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to leave that for now. I think it's okay. Uh, because I think it gets, uh, if I'm remembering how inheritance works properly, I think this TV variable is, will it'll take it from the from the parent. Um, I'm pretty sure. So we can, we can do that. Let's see if it works. That, that, I'm coming up with this on the spot. So I, I don't know if it's going to work. We can try. Um, there we go. So that's universal remote. Then we, we can start working on the actual TVs. What have we done so far? We have done remote. Universal remote, generic remote. Let's work on the actual TVs now, right? So the abstract TV, uh, let's actually just go to like a generic remote. Yeah. The abstract TV up there. Yeah. It, it could be an, it could be an interface, right? So I'll just say a uh, public abstract class TV. It, all it is is public abstract void, abstract void activate, right? Uh, public abstract void v activate and public abstract uh, void abstract void tune and int channel right there we go so it'll tune it to a channel and that's it that's the whole thing right so abstract tv is is really just the same thing as an interface right and it's just going to guarantee that every TV has support for these methods. 
So let's start making actual TVs, right? So we have Sony TV, public class Sony TV, um, extends, extends uh, TV, right? I don't need a constructor, I don't think. So, in, in, you know, put in all methods. So then just for this method, I'll just say um, uh, system, system, dot, system. I just copied the third line. Why, I, don't, I, I think you guys know how to type in a println statement. So I will just uh, system that up print on Sony TV activated here. I have a different one. I have system that out dot print on Sony TV deactivated. And then I have um, tune. So uh, there we go. Sony TV set to channel, right? Uh, channel. Okay. Um, so we have that for NetBeans, you can do S out, then press tab to get the full line. You can do S out. What does that mean? S out. You can do NetBeans, you can do S out, then press tab to get the full line. Like type. Oh, S out and then press tab, like just like this. Or system system dot out dot. Let's do S. So what should I, yeah. Someone give me a quote of what should I type. Just S out and then tap. Not quite. Type in sys, then press control space. Oh, capital S out and then tap. A lot of people. Within a method. S out and then tap. S out, then tap. Oh, there we go. Lowercase S out and tap. There we go. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Thank you for letting me that. Let me know that. Yeah. Let me use S out tab. S out tab. No, S out. No, didn't want to do it this time. S out tab. There you go. That time I wanted to do it for whatever reason. Okay. Good. Thank you for letting me know. That is a lot easier than typing that out every time. Um, okay. So tune. Um, let me space that out a little bit. That's all good. That's all good. There we go. Our Sony TV is fully put into place. Let's put it. Let's make another TV. Let's make a um, remote. Uh, let's go to the client. And then uh, Samsung TV. Let's spell that right. Yeah. Samsung TV. It has a bunch of things to implement, right? So it has um, uh, the all these methods, right? So I'll, again, I'll just I'll just copy and paste it from what I typed before. So it's just it's just as you'd expect it to be, right? So Samsung TV activated, deactivated, set to channel uh, C, I guess. Why is it C this time? Oh no no no. Sorry, it, it doesn't matter. I, yeah, it, it makes no difference. Channel. Let's call it channel because I called it channel before, but um, and um, I guess the TVs also have to have a get channel method. Yeah, okay, this is something that's not part of the thing. So actually, TVs have to have a private private int channel, right? That's the important thing that they have to have. You know, whatever instantiated to zero, and then um, the each TV. I mean, I can just say, I can just, I think I can just say public avoid or public int get channel equals or no, no, tune. Yeah, public int get channel equals uh, no arguments is just return channel. And then I, oh, I could, I could have just done the same, but anyways, public, public void set channel. Uh, int channel. Um, actually, I, I can't call it set channel. I, ca I can, but let's just call it station. Station. Just because I don't want to, um, I don't want to confuse because we have we have a we have a um, we have a method called get channel or set. We have a method called set channel in another class. I, I don't want to just I don't want to confuse that. So uh, set uh, station, right? Int station, this dot station equals station. There we go. Okay. Um, and that should be fine now in the set, in the set channel, in the tune, I'm just going to say um, uh, set channel or set station uh, to be channel. Hopefully that works. Yeah, doesn't seem to get mad at me, so that's good. Uh, Sony TV, same thing. And then um, I don't have the last TV. Let's put the last TV. I forgot about that. It's in client, and it is a Toshiba TV. 
the Toshiba TV will have everything the same again. So all the text will be, you know, just, just the same stuff. Um, let's call this channel and just call this channel. And then we just have to have, oops, not that again. We just have to have a set station uh, channel in here. That's the only addition we have to make just to make it so that the TV store is the, the channel. Um, okay. And then this is going to be get station station. And it still doesn't like, still doesn't like this. Make TV package private. Wait, wait, what? Oh, package private. Make TV package private. Okay. So what I have to do is I have to go to the, the this and I just have to say uh, protect it. Uh, unless actually, unless actually I just can just, oh, no, sorry, that's the station. That's the wrong one. That's supposed to be private. Um, in remote, make TV protected. There we go. That should now work because now when I go to TV or where was this? There may be a misspell in remote class for deactivate slash activate. Is that what? Yeah. D. Yeah. Activate. D. Where is it? D there. Deactivate. There you go. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, that should work now. So now when I say uh, in in universal remote, I say TV .get station. There we go. So it'll get the station from the TV that the parent has, and then it'll add one to it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so everything's working here, except the fact that next channel, when I'm calling it on my remote, doesn't work. So I have to typecast, I have to typecast um, my remote to universal remote. Right? I have to typecast it, so now it'll let me do it. Uh, technically, I should do uh, if my remote is, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what do I say? Instance, instance of, or am I thinking of a different? I think it's instance of, universal remote. The instance of, okay, yeah, um, perfect. Thank you. Um, then I say, then, then do this, right? So that's the formality. We, we should do it. We're in a course about software design, so we should do it. If, um, again, say it's the same. Um, okay. And there we have it. Let's try it. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll just give it a try. Bridge run. There we go. We can see what's happening. Come on. There we go. So Sony TV activated, right? Because we said the on method. So we made a universal remote with a Sony TV. So Sony TV activated, set channel to five, set channel to six, deactivated. Samsung TV, you know, on set channel, uh, next channel turned off. We use the generic remote to turn on the TV, set a channel, and turn off to the Toshiba TV that time. And there you have it, right? So there you go. That is our bridge pattern design, right? And so, the, the, again, the whole point of doing all this was that I can vary the remote and the TV. Which combination? I can vary it to whatever I want it to be at runtime during, like, in the client main file. I can vary it there. I don't need a separate class to say, uh, you know, uh, generic remote with Sony TV. Generic remote with Samsung TV. Generic remote with Toshiba. I don't need a class for each of those. I just need a class for each type of TV and a class for each type of remote. And I can vary it here, right? I can vary the combinations here. I can vary the abstraction, which is the remote, which is the object that we have, with the implementation. And the implementation for us is just what is the print statement, right? Which TV is activating and stuff like that. But, you know, you can imagine in software situations, you would have actually different implementations. These would be actually different, like the different TVs would do different things entirely right? Or maybe not TVs, but different objects would do different things entirely. So you have that left. Um, but yeah, there we go. So uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. We are out of time. It is five o'clock now. So uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover today, but I'll stick around for two more minutes. If there's any questions you guys want to ask, I wish we had time to do more, but that's all the time I got for today. Um, but hopefully seeing the, uh, seeing the, uh, uh, design patterns actually written out and coded and work. Hopefully that was uh, helpful for you guys to understand them. Um, no problem. Good luck everybody on the exam. I hope everything goes well on the exam tomorrow morning. Make sure you get sleep. Um, yeah, well, again, and then uh, I will uh, I will talk to you guys tomorrow for 428. 428, we have a live stream 5 to 7 for 428. We do lots of different things. <laughs> yeah.
Um, yeah, I will post this on my YouTube channel. I, I can post the link in the in the chat there. Um, so uh, here, here's my YouTube channel. I'll post the link there. Oh, sorry, private message it to someone. There we go. So I will um, upload this video there, and I will. I'll, I can put the I can put the code in the in a link in the description of that video. I'll put a, I'll put the code. No problem. Okay, I will stick around for just you know one more minute. If anybody has any last questions, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, thank you guys for joining. I hope it was helpful. Good luck on the exam. Stop recording.